Hello everybody, welcome to Roethby Productions. Today, as you can see, we're doing something a little different. Um, usually on my channel, I'm uploading um, films and trailer mashups um, and sort of uh, media products and wedding videography. But today, as you say, is a little different. I'm doing a podcast on my recent uh, music video called um, Delicate. I wanted to sort of uh, come on here today and create this podcast to sort of do a breakdown of the process from pre-production to production to post-production and a little bit of um, distribution as well because I thought it was it was quite an, an interesting um, and sort of short uh, journey I had with uh, the process of this uh, music video sort of from uh, right at the start chatting to Molly Bridge who is the uh, wonderfully talented um, artist, singer-songwriter who sort of allowed me to... Um, you know, use her music to create a, a video um, for her and for me as well, because this was for my um, foundation degree at um, at Yeovil College. So today, as I said, I just want to sort of break down the process, sort of talk about sort of what I was thinking during it, sort of the initial ideas, you know, storyboarding it, uh, and a, a lyric breakdown, like sort of analysis. And um, so, yeah. So a few months ago, um, I got in contact with um, Molly Bridge, who's someone who I'd worked with before my previous film, um, Maple Leaf. I used a, a beautiful song of hers called Maybe I Love You Too, something she um, sort of wrote and sung herself. Um, it had some sort of, a, it had a beautiful meaning to it, um, amazing lyrics, and the whole song was just, I just thought was really sort of pure. It was fantastic it really was um and it really sort of well suited the the film and the scene that i used it for the bit of b-roll um and so when it came to this next project when i was doing the music video i thought my first idea was you know let me get in contact with molly and see if she wants to do this again you know um and i did and she was like yeah i'm up for this you know I, I, if, what song do you want to use i was like, oh, i really want to use maybe i love you too because i loved it before um and that was in a film but i really sort of feel like i can write another story and bring some more visuals to life through your lyrics using that song so obviously as i did through pre-production i got writing some sort of initial sort of storylines and some characters and sort of what i really wanted to do um something i hadn't obviously done before i didn't want to repeat anything um and so i was looking into that and when i was writing down um some storyboards and i was drawing the visuals for what i was thinking of I suddenly realised, let me listen to some of her other songs, because although I wanted to use this, and although it was a fantastic um, song, I thought, I just want to see what else she's done. So I was listening to some others, and I came across this one called Delicate, and I was listening to it, and I listened to it the first time, and as I got to the end, I just played it again. I just, I was like, I, I need to listen to this again. And I listened to it again. And I was looking at my storyboards that I'd written down. And I was like, this is what I want. This is the song that I want. It really matched everything. It matched sort of the the atmosphere I'd imagined. It matched the visuals. It matched the characters. It matched the whole vibe of the music video that I had in mind. Which was great because there's a lot of filmmakers now out there and um, and sort of uh, story writers as well. Um, when you think of an idea, you know when it works. There's that feeling you get, you can't explain, but you know it works. It's Sometimes you can't get those words out, but it's just you know this is going to work. It, this matches for some reason, but it does. So I used Delicate. I got the song and I realized that it matched. And so I was just coming up with a few other visuals, was writing it down. And that's when I got in touch with my uh, grandparents again that I used for The Inevitable Truth a couple years ago. And I said, listen, I really want you in this. And I said, because this song uh, is it's quite an emotional song. So obviously it's going to hit people. It's going to be quite sad. Um, and like when I did The Inevitable Truth, as I said, um, when you're looking at sort of uh, your primary and secondary research and you look at your um, your target audience, I was like, OK, what do I want to get? A how am I going to get this across, you know, to this certain audience? Like, well, what do people how do people feel emotionally? You know, what, did I, what, what makes them cry? What makes people cry when they watch a film? It's like, OK, well, in sad scenes, it's normally, you know, it's to do with love, maybe a breakup. 
old couples that usually does it for people um cute animals cute babies you know i was writing down sort of all these little aspects of what makes people upset and i thought well obviously the old people that falls into the category of my grandparents so i thought that'd be great to use it and it really just flowed from there really naturally i thought this is really going to work we there was I'll, I'll speak about it in a second one one or two of the obstacles that came along the way but it was a very very good and productive uh, shoot that we did uh, didn't need a reshoot, any reshoots, which was fantastic. I think there was a little, um, trying to think now, I think actually there was one shot, which actually I'll say now leads me on to, uh, one of the little knockbacks is that something I didn't take into account when looking at the weather and filling out all the pre-production, um, documents was when the sun sets. Now, that's probably an obvious thing people need to think, but I forgot that it was going to set really early. So when we did the last couple shots at about five o'clock, the sun was setting. I was like, this is not, I'm like, this is not great. I'm like, I need, I need some more light. Um, but it was fine because I said, we still got a few shots in. Um, and my next thing I wanted to go on to was, um, the de-aging idea that I had right at the start that I wasn't able to fully do, um, when it came to the uh, final product, but the process of it and the idea really want to talk to you guys because it was really exciting. So this was the original video I took um, that I wanted both of my parents in that was going to de-age. Um, this is the screenshot here that I then took and had to work with when I was looking at Photoshop. Um, EB Synth, I think it was called. There were a few face apps I was using, not just solely to DH. All of it together would then add to hopefully create this final product that I was sort of trying to research. Um, so I was using Photoshop to sort of look, get rid of the sort of wrinkles. Also looking at sort of hair color and smoothness options. Um, the face apps, obviously, because then you can use them as a mask. So you make them young, you cut out the mask. Mask and you use, I think it was EB Synth, to then um, create uh, these final looks um, that I was trying to work on after sort of creating the mask. So as I said, as you can see here, this is the old version. And then this is one of the tests that I did to try and make him look young. Obviously, the hair's a little darker, got rid of the wrinkles. Um, and I was putting it face uh, side by side, sorry, next to the wedding video, uh, wedding picture, sorry, of his. Um, and there was actually a lot of similarity, so I was really happy with the um, picture outcome. But obviously I knew it was going to be black and white, which was also sort of in an artistic sort of way, um, get rid of uh, the sort of bits that looked out of place and didn't look real if we added sort of like a colour wash on it. So this was the next thing I did, which was add a colour wash, as you can see here. Basically, this was a uh, flashback scene back to, I think it was 56, they said they got married. Maybe it was a little earlier than that. No, I think it was 1956 they said they got married. Um, And I was looking at some of the wedding pictures. I had had actually colorized them uh, about a year ago for them, just as a little fun thing I was doing. Um, But I was looking back and the similarities were uncanny. It really was, I've got to say, um, really close to it. So I was so happy about that. Um, obviously with my granddad's photo, as I said, as you can see here, you know, the, the sort of color change, the smoothness and sort of, you know, I didn't want to make it full HD because I wanted to have a little hint of sort of the, you know, the fifties, you know, I didn't want it to make it look really, really on point. But, um, but this was something instead I really wanted to work on, you know, so it was a flashback scene back to when they first met. That's what I wanted it to be, which would have only been about sort of four years before they actually got married. I'm pretty sure. Um, so, as I said, I was really happy with this, and you can really see the um, the similarities uh, here. Um, and I said, as I said, I was really happy with sort of the smoothness of the face. Um, what I really wanted to work on was sort of the lips and teeth, because I really wanted to make that, obviously, you know, he looked very different to that sort of about 50 years ago. But the neck I was happy with. Sort of, I did add, it looked like a little, sort of a little bit of stubble, and you can see a little bit of sort of, um, what's the word? I don't know. You You can just see more sort of youngness in the in the sort of the chin and the face there's a little bit more of a sort of curvature to it which is great so overall I was really happy overall this video to me and this song to me was I felt about it was it was love really um and not to sound sort of you know Cornish about it but it's love is delicate you know um and you can convey that and show that sort of 
visually and um, symbolically and stuff like that through um sort of you know through age and you know my grandparents have been married for i think 56 years now you know they've known each other for 60 plus you know and it's like what better way to show sort of the journey of love um how delicate it is and what could happen as you will see in this video um and yeah just to sort of get across as i said how delicate love is how emotional love is and also, you know, as you say, how this music video ends and how this story ends is completely up to you. However you take this story is how it will end. And it's the exact same as Maple Leaf. You know, I was sort of fed up of sort of ending films with a, this is how it should be because I've really grown to learn. That's how I took it. That's how I felt when listening to the, the song and looking at the lyrics and speaking to Molly about how she felt wrote, writing it and how I felt when listening to it. So really, how you felt and how you feel about love and how you feel about your family, how you feel about it all being delicate, that's how the music video will end to you. That's how it will connect with you. So yes, thank you ever so much, guys, for listening in today as I said it's a little different doing a podcast really want to do more of these and break down more of my films I do sound really boring when I say when I talk about this but again you know I don't want to go screaming and shouting just just want to talk and chill and chat about the film and how it was to me and how it is to you guys so yeah thank you so much for watching and listening hope you enjoyed uh, the breakdown of this music video and as I said, I will um, see you guys in the near future when we break down another film or music video or wedding of mine. And thank you very much. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, show your friends. Thank you very much.